I'm gonna give you the top four squat variations that you can utilize to improve your Olympic weightlifting and strength in general. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dan Miller from GarageStrength.com. If this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in getting stronger, you wanna be an explosive freak and you want to dominate all of your opponents in every sport possible, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. Squatting is an absolute pivotal part behind developing successful Olympic weightlifters. And a lot of the problems that I see in a lot of Olympic weightlifters is that they don't squat well or they don't have a good understanding of how to actually squat. And this could be the long-legged lifters who struggle with finding a good movement pattern. They struggle with that time under tension because they're so long. They struggle to actually grind through specific portions of the movement because they're weak in different areas and they haven't ever addressed these problems. Same with people who tend to have really stiff ankles. They struggle with that ankle mobility so their knees don't track overly well and they instead they end up looking like me. They're doing a good morning when they're doing their back squats. And so it's important to recognize, one, squatting transfers really well to pulling strength off the floor. It transfers really well to an effective snatch. It transfers tremendously well to that pull in the clean right off of the floor. And we like to base a lot of our exercises off of that maximal strength. And it's important to even utilize that back squat as a gauge for the success of your athlete to figure out how well are they snatching relative to their squat? How well are they clean and jerking relative to their squat? How well are they front squatting relative to their back squat? And so when we see how important it is to utilize a back squat as an exercise indicator, now we can start to dive into those various issues and how we can improve the squat so that we can continue to see the trajectory of our athletes improve because their strength is improving and in turn, their technical coordination will improve as well. That first factor that I like to focus on when we're talking about athletes and their back squat is I like to focus on the eccentric portion of the movement. Eccentric loading is key to success. It's key to understanding the motor pattern, especially with long-legged squatters. If we have an athlete that does have 60% or more of their height in their legs, it's going to be hard to really bump their squat tremendously. But if you can spend a lot of time under tension through that eccentric portion, it can really enhance their trunk stability. It can also enhance their back strength and all these other various things. But let's talk about what is the eccentric portion of the squat. When an athlete takes a squat out of the rack, they'll take that bar out of the rack, they'll set their feet, they'll fill their entire gut with air, they'll fill up their belly button, they'll fill up their chest with air, and then they start the descent. So when the descent begins, that is the eccentric portion of the squat. And that's where I like to see four, five, six, all the way up to eight second eccentric movements. If we can do eight second eccentric movements, now that lifter learns that precise pattern that they need to uphold when, when they're coming through that concentric portion of the lift. So I like to utilize six to eight second eccentrics for two to three reps within a set and keep the weight a little bit lighter. This is gonna help the lifter feel their knees track forward, to feel those hips come back while their knees are tracking forward, to stay upright with that trunk control and to drive as aggressively as possible out of the bottom portion of the squat. Utilize these about once a week. This can make your lifters pretty sore because there's a lot of time under tension and because there's a lot of damage that goes on during the eccentric portion of the squat. That third key variation that I really like to utilize to improve squat mechanics, to improve squat strength, is the pause back squat. And I love having my lifters use pause back squats, especially my long-legged lifters. What ends up happening is I want to see a controlled eccentric portion, and then when they get to the bottom, I want them to continue to sit and almost put more pressure through their entire foot, through their hips, to keep that upper back nice and tight, to think about showing their chest off while they're in the hole. 
hold that position for two to three seconds and drive out of the hole as fast as possible. You can use a bounce to come out of the hole, but I prefer when we're talking just about the pause back squat, I prefer just one drive right out of the hole from a static position. And what that ends up doing is this can help not only long-legged lifters, but also your short-limbed lifters. A lot of short-legged lifters struggle with pulling off the floor. That's where they have a lot of weakness. They, they're really good at catching, but they struggle off the floor because they don't have as long of hamstrings and they don't have as strong as a lower back as the long-legged lifters. So when you use a pause back squat with your short-limbed squatters, now they start to carry that over to their pull off the floor. It's almost exactly where they're going to be when they pull the snatch or they pull that clean. So utilize that pause for two to three seconds and drive up fast. This is something that you can also utilize if you have somebody who does have lower back mobility issues. They have ankle mobility issues. Now you can put that pause in there and you can help them enhance those different positions. They drive up and even in between sets, they can do ankle mobility exercises while they're still doing those pause back squats. Finally, as an aside, I utilize pause back squats two to three days a week as warmups for a deadlift program. And that helped me lead to this massive deadlift PR. So it does help tremendously with that pulling strength, it helps with mobility, and it helps with that drive right out of the hole. That second key squat that I love to utilize to blow up the back squat is an unbroken tempo, or I like to even call it that Morris tempo. So I spent a lot of time around one of the best youth, junior, senior level lifters that the US has ever produced, Harrison Morris. I've spent a lot of time at various competitions with him. And one of those things that I noticed is that he had a tremendous back squat, okay? His squat was phenomenal. And I'd see him as a 77K lifter. Now he's an 81 with the new weight class changes. But he would take a bar out of the rack with 240 kilos, 230 kilos, and just smash doubles. Boom, boom. He would barely pause between reps. It was almost like an unbroken rep, down, up, down, up. And I think what ends up happening when you utilize this, when Harrison would do that tempo, is it establishes very strong trunk control. And when that trunk control is established and you're focusing, you've got that really tight mind-muscle connection, when you're focusing on moving as quickly as possible in that unbroken set, now your movement pattern dramatically improves. Your drive improves out of the hole. Your movement is faster. And when it's a little bit faster, it's gonna transfer better over to those higher end weights. So I like to utilize unbroken sets as drop sets off of some heavier movement. I like to utilize unbroken sets even from a timed perspective. I like to utilize that to see how my athletes are recovering. If we have a set of two to four reps that's timed and I can see that they're moving a little bit slower, well, hey, we gotta back off for the next couple of days. Or I see that they're driving very, very rapidly and they're hitting these crazy times at very high weights. Well, now we're gonna help them get into peak condition later on because of what we've done leading into that moment. So it's important to utilize Unbroken or that Morris Tempo on a regular basis but utilize it for specific reasons. Try to improve movement patterns, try and improve speed of the lift, or try to use it as a gauge to see where your lifters are at, and that's gonna help you better peak your lifters. So we utilize all these principles in our Stronger Legs program. You can click on the link down below in our description. You can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up that Stronger Legs program to help you blow up your squat. And if you want more information on how we periodize and how we think about programming from block to block, while you're at garagestrength.com, you can pick up our Parabolic Periodization book and course to help you further understand our thought process behind these exercises and behind our technical model. Finally, that number one exercise that I love to utilize is the double bounce back squat. And so I believe that if you have mobility problems, the double bounce back squat is going to help you dramatically 
with your mobility. I also believe if you need a huge boost, if you need to get stronger, use the double bounce. It's going to create a lot of time under tension. It's going to create a stretch shortening cycle. When that cycle happens, okay, when that bounce occurs, one, the muscle will get lengthened further on the second bounce than it did on the first bounce. So that's gonna trigger your GTO to fire more, to recruit more high threshold motor units. Your body, your response in the nervous system is telling your body to bring in more motor units so that you can lift that weight. On top of that, if you can do that for two to four reps consistently, now all of a sudden your squat will continuously grow over a long period of time. I like to use these to peak my athletes, one, because they're gonna improve their squat strength, but two, when we're taking max attempts at a competition, oftentimes on that second or third attempt in the clean and jerk, there will be a double bounce component to that clean catch. This is an idea that I've taken directly from Norik Vardanian, one of the best American weightlifters that we've ever had. And he's coached by his father, Yuri Vardanian, who has since passed away, but I believe is a top four greatest lifters of all time. If you wanna learn more about those lifters, click on this card right here. But Yuri Vardanian utilized the double bounce in a 220 plus K clean and jerk at a body weight of 82 and a half kilos. He is one of the best pound for pound lifters of all time. He's also the lightest person to ever total over 400 kilos. So he utilized the double bounce consistently when he was going for those max attempts. And that's exactly why I like to utilize that double bounce. It's a unique method to improve mobility, to force your body to recruit more motor units and it's also something that your body will naturally do when you get on the platform and you're taking those top level lifts. So if you wanna be one of the best lifters, I recommend utilizing double bounce back squats once a week and you can do five doubles and you're gonna see that drastic increase in your back squat. So if you want help with your squat based training and you want to blow up your legs so that you can transfer that directly to the platform, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our Stronger Legs program today. If you want more information about Olympic weightlifting training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time guys, peace.